and welcome to episode 14 of the Scumbag. I'm Ed Zitron, and this is not actually Felix Biedemann. Hello, it's me, uh, Jesse Ferrar. He is Bronze Hammer on Twitter. He's well known for being uh, the butt of many jokes about Five Guys, uh, which really aren't fair. Which aren't really fair. I have done much research on the fact that no one has done anything with his wife that is not him. I mean, I assume stuff happened before they got married. Like, uh, I don't think she was a nun or anything, but I, and he is not even a large fellow. So, I mean, just like, let's cut those rumors out for today, I think. Yeah, I'm normal. Um, and everything I do and say is normal. And my wife is lovely. Yeah, normal people for normal things, which is really not the theme of the of the scumbag. And today you'll notice that Felix is not on. Felix has actually taken a vacation to jack off. He has not jacked off in around three months. And he has a lot of a lot of jacking off to do, a great deal. So he will be back next week. We also will be bringing in Jesse as a regular, regular guest. He will be a regular... He'll be a regular part of the scumbag now with Felix and I. I look forward to having him. And today we're both on a subject that is close to our hearts in the we are both going to be talking about the wonders of just the complete meaningless shit of technology. And yeah, it's just, I, I don't know why most things exist now. And it's really beginning to upset me. Yeah, well, the 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 practical reason that all these things exist uh, is that we buy them and that we're stupid. Um and that's uh, that's our fault, and I think we got to own that. But we're also not the same people that are developing them. Uh, and uh, boy, they can really turn out a lot of junk. Uh, and it's all in my house; I have it all. Yeah, and and the worst thing is, I think the worst thing for technological society or just society in general is really quite. It, it, it has been Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and I run a PR tech firm. I'm not going to get into the business of that. But my God, is there some shit out there? I mean, just shit. And I, look, the worst one I've seen was my my wife, or at voice. <laughs> she she used to have we we changed cars, and her old one had this thing that's like an HUD. You, it's pretty cool. It's like when you're driving, you can see how fast you're going. It's telling you where you're going, and it's a cool idea. And it just it would not unobtrusively be projected up onto the window. It's just part of the car. So I naturally thought, oh, her new car will have that. It did not. She wanted it. So I got this obscenely expensive, this $800 thing, and I thankfully got the money back called Navdi. And what it, what it looked like in all the ads was that it would project onto the window screen, the window windshield, and you'd just be like, oh, brilliant. First of all, it's already $800, so I'd expect it to fucking like make things really work. And they get there to install it, and it's a fucking screen. And I mean, I you obviously can't see where my hand is, but imagine you have the steering wheel. Imagine imagine having a large screen in front of your steering wheel that has something projected onto it. So like a little TV without it being, it's, it's like transparent. And the guy was there being like, what's the problem? And she just, and she is brilliant because she is not a technological person, like, at all. And it's hilarious because she just went, this is just fucking stupid. This is just fucking stupid. Why would I want something that covers? And she's an SUV, so it's not even like a a little car. It's a giant fucking screen in front of her. And this thing was backed on Kickstarter, took like three years to get out there. And it is the least applicable to human beings product of all fucking time. When you were, when you were talking about it, I did get the impression that it, that it did project onto the windshield, but it, you're saying it doesn't? It's just a, it's a screen? Yeah, what it is, is it's like, it's it should project onto the, I even said to the guy, why doesn't it just do that? Yeah. And he goes, uh. <laughs> like, like, that was like his answer, because he was with another company that just insta- installs him. Wow. And <laughs> it was just like, he, he took it back and they refunded it, so I can't be that angry about that. But I am angry that just, it was just the kind of product that you see in the wild and you're like, who thought this was a good idea? And it's very Silicon Valley to see this. And it's Kickstarter and Indiegogo that really kicked this off, I think. It's just like, I have a really, like, a good idea on paper or in a rendering, but it's fucking stupid in execution. Yeah, because the, the satisfaction of the consumer is not the point. The, the safety of the vehicle is not the point. The point is to, to get the money. So once they got the money, the, their interest ends. So I don't know. It's 
it's sort of difficult to to blame them for uh, for the hands off approach to retail. That's what we've incentivized. But what I'm surprised by is that the technology is so difficult to master. Uh, I remember in high school, I had a buddy who had a Saturn, uh, and of course, Saturn's not around anymore. But it was just a just a bread basket, like just a, a piece of junk, just a shit box of a car, uh, and it had this technology. <laughs> like, this is. It literally had that thing. Yeah, it's like this is like a decade ago on That's like the worst car that you probably could have gotten at the time, and had the little uh, you know oh in God. the dash you know seamless. It was a big plastic dash, but I mean the the car couldn't have been like many times more than eight hundred dollars itself, and <laughs> it still managed to include this and also uh, you know like drive him around town. <laughs> That's kind of a it's kind of like a big feature gap hey. there. It's like a, it, 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 you know what? I can understand. It's a nice car. She drives a very nice car. I'm not going to name what kind because I don't want my, as usual, the haters in my mentions. Yeah, the trolls. Who are there, who say that I wear purple too much, that I made up that I have a fiance, that I made up that I have had sex, <laughs> that I have made up most of the information about my life. Um, all of which is true, by the it's way. All, it's all and way, it's too real. It's too real. It's too real. And I don't like reality. <laughs> I think that we can, we can all establish that. But the, the big thing is, is like, the guy put it on there and then looked at us like we were fucking space aliens. He was like, huh. Okay. So he thought you were weird just, for buying it? No, no. He thought we were weird for not liking oh. it. And I'm I'm serious. Like if you if you've never driven a car for some reason, just imagine that where the steering wheel. If you've never driven a car, I can't help you. But if you've never like driven, say most modern cars, they have the steering wheel and kind of a lump above the steering wheel, mm. and that's where it goes. And it sits, and it's a good like iPhone seven, uh, like iPhone plus sized device, and it's just. For, not the device itself is that's pretty flat, but the actual screen is like that, and it's transparent. And the guy was like, "Oh, it's transparent. You'll see right through it." And I'm like, "Can you demonstrate that without taking off the sticker and being unable to return it?" No. Oh, I just said, I put it back okay. in the box. Take it. Take it away. I don't want to see this again. But it's not. That, and that one isn't even the stupidest because I was talking with various journos I know about it, and none of them seem to have. Really, like they said in a sedan, it would be bad, but shit, this is like a giant SUV, a big ass machine, and it still was in the way. And then the worst thing is, I went and looked on because I'm an idiot, we are all the now. I went and actually looked on the, I went and looked on my, uh, on my internet that I'm just going with that phrase now, <laughs> and I looked, and there was just an app that did it. Oh, it wasn't the best version, but it was like, and this version was meant to like look at your texts and like let you use Google Maps and shit. But there was just an app you just throw in the front of your fucking car. Yeah, but it was eight hundred and one dollars, does- right? That was why you didn't do it. No, it was like the well, no, the app was like thirty bucks. <laughs> and so I found this out afterwards. I really would have felt fucking furious if ha- if the app had come out. I found the app after I actually installed it. But my my fiance is a wonderful person in that she's completely honest with me about things and she was just like no no i don't want it send it back and the guy was just i think scared of her right so like he probably probably would have made me keep it oh yeah absolutely he would have sensed blood in the water yeah well i think she would have cut him that's the problem (laughs) but but have you seen you you've seen a few of these stupid things yourself like well yeah you know i Kickstarter is, of course, I mean, it's well documented how uh, that's a hive of scum and villainy. But, yeah. you know, like just today, I, w- I think maybe Pebble would have been counted amongst Kickstarter's uh, few sincere mass market successes. Uh, and yet it's so it's closed now. So it's done. And they've sold themselves off to Fitbit for, uh, you know, slightly more than they owe everybody. But if you go and check out their <laughs> Kickstarter page... Now, uh, everyone's very upset because they're not going to be able to get returns or, or exchanges or, and eventually they're just going to shut the servers off. So it's like, even the stuff that works doesn't work. Uh, what, what is the, what's the best case scenario exactly for supporting this, this technology? I I don't understand why people continue, uh, continue to do it. It's just, it's nuts. Well, and the best part about the Fitbit thing 
that Fitbit uh, uh, Pebble situation is that like six months ago, someone offered them seven hundred million dollars for Pebble. Oh God! And they were like, no, 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 we can get more. And they sold for like thirty million, which sounds like a lot of money, right? But when you've like sold five, like fifty million of watches, like really mediocre, shitty fucking watches. That, that you literally have to download an app to see the time on, by the way. <laughs> that is a thing. <laughs> like, it's just like horrible shit. It's, well, we're all, you know, we all got to be connected to the internet. We can't do anything uh, without Offline. it. You know, all the, all the smart, the, I guess the smart devices is like, that's the the next frontier for all this junk, right? Is to, is to insert not just Wi-Fi Bluetooth capability, you know, if this, then that, uh, t- technology and understanding, but also, uh, to get us hooked up to the cloud, which is super important for shit like a lamp or something. Uh, yeah. and, and to have the, the brains of various search engines inserted into it somehow, like that's the new wave of, of stuff we're going to buy and then hate six months after we buy and, it. Right. And why? Like that's, and, and the bet. The best one I've seen, I think, is like you've got like Wi-Fi crock pots, which actually, you know, that isn't the stupidest idea. I can see it. I've I, heard, I can I can see yeah. why. I don't think it's necessary because like the whole point is that you just walk away. Mm. But if if you go on if this then that and just type in wife, you get some of the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like. Like, like, I'm just going to read my favorite one. I don't even want to know what it is. It's just, do not disturb my wife. <laughs> it's do and not what it is, is it's, a, it, it's a command to your phone. If the night, if device connected to home Wi-Fi, then set volume to 20%. People are so fucking lazy and stupid. They can't just turn down their volume. Incredible. And there's one, that, there's, this is actually great. I'm really glad I looked up the word wife on here. Turn the thermostat down if the wife set it too high. Brackets again. Oh, I actually, uh, I need that one. If you can send me that <laughs> link, I need that. I need that one really bad. But it's great though, because it's like spiteful IoT. Yeah. It's like set a temperature threshold and what to turn it back down to. That's T O O. In my experiences, you may need to set multiple as miss as my missus has been known to turn it up when it's already too hot. I don't even know what that command does. <laughs> like, it's just like and there's some like like wife wife is like text my wife when i leave work it's just do just do it yourself you have lazy shit oh, bag and, and it, but this is the world we live in now and it's it i have i have iot in my home i have that shit like the alexa to turn on my lights which is cool mm-hmm. it is cool to turn off all my lights with one with one word one word or one sentence and lock my door that's fine but people like oh you're gonna get the really cool shits there's like sensors that turn on when you open it no i'm just gonna hit the lamp the the button when i walk into the bathroom or yell at alexa for it i guess but like that's like people are taking this to an insane level where they have their homes like timed so it's like at this time open my garage door turn on the crock pot make coffee and it's it all sounds like this great idea until you actually try and look at it, yeah, and execute, and it's shit. It's terrible. Yeah, we all we all grew up in the Hanna Barbera world where we thought uh, it was going to be the Jetsons, like right around the corner, uh, and anything short of that, or like one of the little uh, I don't know if this is outside your cultural bubble or not, but like the the Goofy from Mickey Mouse, like his futuristic <laughs> Walt Disney world. Uh, Epcot yeah. Center kind of shenanigans, like anything outside of that, is not progress to us. Uh, and that's we're we're stuck with this sick fantasy <laughs> in which we have little uh, mechanized or steampunk, all, all this junk running our lives, and uh, we just can't deal with it. And not even close to being ready to happen. And yeah, the voice control stuff is what I love. Even Alexa, which I use every day, is just confused by me perpetually. Again, much like my fiance, but don't blame Tish. Um, it's <laughs> It's like I'll be like Alexa, turn on the li- turn off the downstairs lights. I cannot find a device called Spicy Mama, <laughs> and it's like I I don't e- like I don't really know what to say. Like it's just like I'm just yelling at it, yeah. and it's it's like 
But what's great as well is if you go deeper into into this world, you'll see how many things actually connect to this horrible internet of things, like the Home Connect oven, Home Connect washer, the Wink Egg Minder. It, the Egg Minder tells your Wink app the number of eggs left in your tray and when the oldest one got there. And there are five, if this, then that, things. If your egg minder has less than this many eggs, then get an email. <laughs> that is that is a thing. Uh, n- new email from eggs at refrigerator.com. Egg. <laughs> if your egg has less than this, if your egg minder has less than this many eggs, then add a toss to Toodle Do. What the fuck is Toodle Do? Like this, it's like this. It, it, there is there is gonna be someone killed by one of these things. I just, well, hang on, like this, you don't have Toodle Do. Yeah, come on, guys, come on. get on the get on the fucking Toodle Do train, Toodle-Doo? everyone. Well, so so what should <laughs> so after you get the email that the eggs are running low, uh, you should go ahead and set up a Gmail filter to throw that email into a grocery list on Keep, right? Uh, yeah, and then from there get a let's see how can we hook this up we got to get something where you can you can have the dash button pressed at home uh for you so how do we connect eggs and a dash button there's got to be a way to do this what's the recipe for this it's it's peewee's playhouse yeah that's that's ever the valley is trying to actually create peewee's playhouse yep yep that's it that's what's the word happening. of the day is uh, a horse shit, uh, a living nightmare. <laughs> a living, and you go on like if this then that has also cut out some of my favorites. There used to be one where there was like sweetie, you could find some really good sweetie content. <laughs> but what's great though is you type in love now, and what's amazing is there's actually one for BMW. Alexa, trigger BMW love to send your car an automated message. Uh, send send your wanna, car. Want to fuck my car? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, oh my god! I just found the weirdest one. Okay, so this one I don't know what device this is. Something called Sense Mother. Mother and the motion cookies is a family of incredible versatile sensors that you can easily program to monitor everyday life. All right, listen to this. I'm just gonna read this out because when I read this, I I just. When I touch mother's face, send a love notification to my significant other. What? Uh like, so okay, okay. So this is like uh this is like really low level teledildonics, is that right? Is that what this yeah. is? And that's the thing, it's like I guess mother is some sort of sensor, but just the way it like Ugh. like like it, it gets really creepy. Like, but then there are all the really lazy ones, and I fucking hate this whole... There's actually a long joke in Silicon Valley that doesn't actually make any sense if you know, like, one thing in Silicon Valley. It's like, um, well, you know, every startup is trying to replace things that your mom did. And it's like, no, they're not. Most startups are not actually doing that. There's the laundry one, and there's, like, there's one, the cleaning one. You know, these are things that, like, your mum probably did, but you probably did too. But what does get me is more, it's just trying to replace base human functions and the, the what makes a person not a sociopath. Yeah, it's... Such as, send a text to your loved ones at home when we when you leave work. Remind your partner you that you love them. Uh, I mean, it... It is it is absurd, but you you have to admit that there like there is a fine line here. I think between uh, the usefulness and then just uh, like you said, complete substitution for autonomy, right? Because yeah, that's crazy. Like uh, automatically send a text as if your wife picks up on the other end when her phone buzzes and goes, "Oh, good, the computer sent me a thing saying my husband loves me." Like that's not. Like you don't have a wife if you think that that's how wives work. Like wives, <laughs> wives don't work that way. But you know, like we have. Uh, so this is not a plug, not a sponsorship. Uh, we have the the free, you know, the Life three hundred and sixty. Do you know what this is? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I used to work for them. Oh okay. Uh, well, Lovely so people, it's actually. really good. Uh, so you don't have to uh, cut this part out and post. I like it a lot. And 
and I'll tell other people and they'll say, that's weird. That's creepy that you can look up and see where your wife is, or she could look up and see where you are or whatever. She's been with the trainer for four hours, <laughs> but at least I know where she is. You know, that's the important yeah. part is she's safe with him and I trust him, but, but like, that's good to me. But when it goes into like automating a phone call or some crap like that, that's when I tune out. I don't know. Is that, is that hypocrisy? Do you think, or no, it's, and that's the, and like normal people and my fiance and her family are kind of really like normal people they they like go to work they come home they cook meals they don't have some sort of like if this then that functionality that pins their elo loves to their their car so, so they're not whatever. living in the the technology condom that we live in the, the, the future is fucking stupid if this is the future it fuck it it's just totally fucking stupid that they they have no idea what this is so when i explain it to them and most technology people they explain it with this kind of veneer of just shittiness they're like man they didn't know that you can even do alexa and no i will like, not fix your computer and, it's, and yeah they act like that's a big heroic act that sucks there's a program that does it for you now right. and it's easy and i actually quite enjoy it but that's just me but they, but they don't. They they see these things. Actually, the most depressing one is when my fiance turns to me and she'll uh, sit there. And she'll be looking at stuff on Facebook and she'll get one of these uh, insider videos. And it'll be like something really cool. It'll be a tiny little printer that just, with a mind of its own, drives around and prints. And I just have to turn to her and say, "Yeah, that's never going to happen." And she's like, "Why? It's here. It's here on the thing." I'm saying, "No." It, it it's claiming to use artificial intelligence to just magically know where it is on a fucking page. That is either going to come out and suck or it's never going to come out. Right. That's how these, that's how this is poisoning the world more than the kind of half human technology condom wearing dipshits <laughs> who have their fucking, whatever it is, send a, a note to their grandma saying they love you. And like, it's just like, it's, it's more just like there is this, it's all become this giant pyramid scheme. Because if you go and look for something cool on Kickstarter, all of them say like ship in June 2017. Right. And if they do ship, it's very rare that they actually exist. And like 90% of them now are phone chargers. I don't think if you, if you go on Kickstarter now, it's like phone charger, phone charger. It's a phone charger. And then of course there is one like t- t- Dapply, Take the cloud system to take back the internet with your own plug and play home set. Fuck off. No one cares. And but then again, that's better than the smart garden, your solution for better food. Yeah, the, the Wi Fi connected toaster is like dead on arrival. So I it's it's hard for me to be too upset with people that I think are genuinely trying to come up with an idea, or at the very least trying to fleece investors out of millions of dollars. But like the 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 I, what's more inscrutable to me are the people who, I guess, sort of in the continuation of the thing that you know used to be on late night TV all the time, where you called a number and they helped you patent your shitty invention, and then uh, m- maybe they made a few hundred of it and sent it off to China or whatever, like uh, like the guy who invented the slip and slide or whatever the hell. Like, I guess <laughs> the new version of that is uh, is somebody says, "Oh, I think I should." Um, like stick a computer chip uh, inside a uh, like a rolling pin, and then it can tell you how uh, <laughs> f- uh, flat the thing is. And then at the end of the week, it's you see a roller. You, you see how many um, rolls you did, um, and then you can import that to your Fitbit. And and like the, <laughs> those people are worse to me because it's just intellectually bankrupt from the get go. There's no who is that for? Who's this stuff for? That's what boggles my mind. What's crazy though is that they get funded. Yeah, they do. They actually do. They they, they like there is this uh, the smart garden your solution for better food. Oh, that's real. Meet the future of food. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> I'm reading these from Kickstarter. <laughs> the smart garden grows fresh food for your for you containing up to 600% more antioxidants with zero effort. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I'm going to guess this isn't by nutritionists or herpetologists or anyone who's ever been in a garden and it's like 
they, that, and they're like, the click and grow smart soil, and it just looks like a turd. <laughs> And it's just like, they're talking about smart soil. It's just soil. It's fucking soil. Smart soil. Cool. And it grows like what looks like herbs? Well, I guess it, it grows is, I, I, grows antioxidants, yeah, it, right? Well, it, yeah, but that's the funny thing. It's like 600, it's 222,000 raised out of 78,000 gold. So people, there are people like, yep, fucking A. I need that smart garden. And it's and it's like that I I see these things and I feel like there has to come a point where we haven't even got just to the stupid startups that get millions. These are the ones that are just direct to consumer yeah, products. Like like well direct to consumer scams I was going to say. Oh yeah. They're the ones where they like they're like straight up just take the fucking money directly from people. They don't even need a VC. And then you see something where it's like a smart fabric keyboard, but it's like, oh, that's a doohickey. That's fun. But then the smart brewer for every kind of tea. Huh? It's got a fucking teapot and some water. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, so we're, it, we're done inventing solutions uh, for problems. Now we're inventing problems. Uh, and then, and then, for, uh, yeah, trying to scam people out of money to get those solutions made. That, uh, what was the problem with tea? Uh, what was the problem there? The, pro- the problem was it wasn't smart enough. <laughs> Uh, it's dumb tea. And, ah. d- uh, every time I have a cup of tea, I'm always thinking, God damn it, why did <laughs> I, I did not log this in the spreadsheet in Google Docs but, automatically? You know, the electric kettle is good. Like that's uh that to me it is a solution to a problem. You know, the, the yeah, maybe you're a tea purist, I don't know, but to me, uh it's a little bit easier to throw it on an element that I know is not gonna necessarily need to be watched like a hawk so i don't scald the tea or, or crack the porcelain or whatever the hell you know so the 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 smart plastic uh i guess i'm using the words see they've gotten to me already the marketing has got I'm, I'm adding the word smart before everything the electric kettle that is like the pinnacle of yeah of tea technology right i don't feel like we have to go over that hump that pretty much it's does just it for a, me. it's just a- Oh, the smart garden. You know what? There's a smart garden outside. It's called a garden. Yeah, and you you don't you put, get locked put, into... The only ecosystem you get locked into is the one uh, that's on Earth. You don't have to, like, yeah. get <laughs> shipments of special, special I, alkalized water. I like the tea water. one, though. I like the tea one, though, because I, I worked on a chai maker once, and that one makes sense because that one is at least, like, a fucking nightmare. To make a cup of chai is difficult. Mm-hmm. But like this one is just for tea, like peppermint tea. Mm-hmm. You can get something for thirty bucks off of Amazon, and this amazing thing called a kettle that heats water, or even shit. You can use like a hob, and it'll go, and like the water is hot, and you pour it on the tea, and then drink the delicious liquid, and feel better. Yeah, or you could like that's it. Maybe you could get like a little Furby to drink the tea for you, and then you don't. Then there's like you don't have to do anything. You just get the. Pour tea directly into Furby, and then you set up a if this then that to do it, and then you go to bed. I I kind of like a Furby that drinks your tea. <laughs> uh, I don't want the tea anymore. Yet like a weight loss device that the like the Furby appears near your food and just like looks at you weird, and you're like, ah, I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm d- this is disturbing. It, I don't <laughs> disturbing. I quite like that. That's my Kickstarter. It's just. Like I will, I will just upset you and do fitness. Shame, Furby. Well, the best thing that's ever been designed, by the way, is uh, at Drew Toothpaste, uh, Drew, Drew Fairweather of Married to the Sea. He may be this. It's a button that just makes the Rob Zombie sound whenever. <laughs> let the yeah, he go. I'll oh, hit it now. <laughs> that come through. That was good. Yeah. Did that? Did you hear oh, that yeah. one? Yeah. That. Yeah, and that's great. That's just a little button. Uh, it, it, it goes, yeah, like Rob Zombie and more human than human. It's the best smart devices I've ever owned. And it, so, I kind but of now, w- but it doesn't come with an app though. You said, I really wish it would connect to Wi-Fi though, but I would definitely get stabbed to death by my fiance, <laughs> uh, because it would go off all the time. But the, the biggest scam I've seen at the moment, I'm not going to name it because they actually came to me for new business. So I don't want to like piss them off sure. that much, or at least don't want to get sued. But there is this fucking... Smart remote, the first remote for everything. And I know this because I got sent it by 
a uh, the uh, a, some related to someone who works for me. And they're like, it's amazing. What it is is it's a you point at any device. And the high definition touch screen will instantly display an intuitive interface to control that specific device. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, all right, I may not be the smartest person in the world. In fact, very, 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 very much the opposite. You're down the list. And and it's like you can just point this thing at anything and it'll just work. It beggars sure. belief. Sure, and there's like shit tons of people who've written about this. It's a magic one for your smart home, says Digital Trends, for example. And what's great about it is my first, my my favorite part as well is it goes PlayStation Four, which I can tell you for a fact cannot get controlled by fucking anything. Mm. That's kind of a thing, right? But it's like, and they were like, "It's amazing." You just point at anything. I'm like, "No, this is a classic scam. It's a classic fucking scam because this can't do that." Unless you attach like a beacon to literally everything you have. This is the horny dream of technology in one. This is like, I will attach a tiny little technological bunion, like a barnacle, that will just know how things work and it will just control it. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's Stark tech. Like, it, we're, we're not Iron Man. You can't, there, there are, are protocols. Are like, this, this stuff has to work within a very narrow set of rules. And there are so many physical barriers to shit like that working. But the problem is that the people are, that are buying into it and worse, the people that are buying it, to them, so much of actual current technology might as well be magic. So uh, this is this is not even a step in any direction to them. It's the same. Like, uh, there's so much stuff that you and I take for granted as being, like, very obvious. Uh, and I know... Uh, so you've got a, you've got a very fancy vehicle, which I'm sure has this, but so many crappy cars have TPM tire pressure monitoring, and uh, yeah. with with certain tires, uh, it's actually really expensive to replace these modules uh, on the tires because they have sensors, equipment, and and they send the information to the onboard computer in the car. But do you think most people have any idea that that's like a very real and tangible technology or do they just describe it to like oh i don't know i got a new car it does some cool shit like to them that's no different like than a, pointing a remote at a computer and it bringing up control alt delete on it or whatever yeah i think that that's that that's the best way to look at it and it's funny as well when you see this tech shit pop up in kind of well the the, the pools we swim in as far as to, uh, like the the feel the Felix pool and the Chapo pool and all that. Sure. And you see it come up and they joke about like Fuckler, which is the most consistent joke they make about social <laughs> networks. But yeah. let's be perfectly honest. They're not totally far off. Cause like snap glasses are the ones that are really like, that's the one where I have had no less than five people breathlessly explain to me why Snapchat is the future. And they're like, you see Snapchat is the future because you see the teens use it, you know, teenagers, that well-known group uh, who, who don't change things all the time. They also <laughs> don't age, but they don't age by the way. That famously dependable demographic of teens. Yeah. And this company is now worth like $20 billion and they release 150 or hundred dollar fucking glasses. We talked about them on the scumbag before, but it's very much of this. All they do, and I tried some the other day, they literally are, they're incredibly wonky to organize as well. You put them on, you need to like look at your phone and you need to do some Bluetooth shit and you don't really know when it's recording. Mm -hmm. It just kind of awkwardly does it. But I've been watching tech people breathlessly talk about it all month and it's fucking hilarious. Like watching them be like, it's the future. That's it. You see, what it does is that you can you can now like both your hands are free, so you can like pet your dog. <laughs> and like, like that's that that was literally an explanation of of snap glasses, like why they're good. Well, it, it's the same. Uh, call me crazy, but we we already had this thing, Google Glasses, and <laughs> yeah. and that was insane for different reasons because it costs a lot of money, uh, and and did a lot of different things, uh. But all these people derided that for being creepy, right? So well, it was more expensive. Of course, it's more. Yeah, well. sure. It's 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 aimed at the enthusiast. But even as a proof I'm of a, concept, I'm a way cooler. It's 
exponentially more impressive than the snap glasses, right? Yeah, and the snap glasses, and what's great about them as well is watching people use snap glasses on Snapchat and watching how fucking stupid their lives are. It'd be like going to the subway, and it's like this really like kind of nausea inducing, like it's like a shaky cam uh Blair Witch project. It's like watching everyone's life like the Blair Witch project. Because ah. it's really shaky. <laughs> And like, well, yeah, and they like because image stabilizing would cost a lot of money, and then they wouldn't be the hundred and fifty dollar darling that gets written up on uh, blogs and stuff. The, the only thing that matters is marketing. That's the only thing that matters, probably in the entire world. And it, it's amazing how uh, how much work it does to like drive the wheels of what we perceive. It's it's nonsense. They look like garbage too, right? They look terrible. Yeah. You look like you're wearing like those uh the the glasses that you get at New Year's Eve. Yeah. With the year on them, but they have little I I and I looked at like the ones that are black, which are the least embarrassing ones, and I really mean that that's not that's not a compliment. <laughs> but like and I I looked at them and I'm like I put them on. I looked in the mirror I was like fuck I look stupid. And that was the first th- first thought. And there are people just walking around wearing them. And there are people queuing up for hours and they're like, Matt, that's it. And I think there is a certain anxiety here that's doing it. I think it's something, it, and not to collect, connect to the election, but you, I'm going to do it. It's what drives a lot of this media and a lot of people on social media as well. It's like, what is popular right now and being afraid of not so much being left behind, but not being part of the conversation. But there's this weird thing where Google Glass, people already knew Google were a company and they were like two grand and they were like way ahead of their time. They were super cool. Yeah. And also they, you really look like, uh, you really look like a prize pillock wearing them. Not as dumb as if you look, if you, if you're wearing like these snap glasses, which look like comedy. I mean, you look like Howard Stern when you wear them. Yeah. You worse. (laughs) And it's like, um, these things like look so dumb and they're 150 bucks. So not an accessible price for a teenager. Like no one seems to be talking about that as well. But like, teenagers, teenagers do not seem to like have much money. That's a hallmark of their existence. Right. Like teenagers generally are not well moneyed Silicon Valley people. And frankly, full grown adults don't appear to be able to afford Silicon Valley, let alone to, I don't even fucking know, man. I'm j- just in my head. I'm just trying to imagine this. But it's amazing watching the vacuous. It's very similar to how people were trying to explain how bad Trump was and how great Hillary was, despite, despite in the case of Hillary, like the very bad things that were happening mm-hmm. and like the very bad signs. It's this insane group thing with this company where Snapchat is the worst. I don't get it. And I know that people have the response like, if you don't get Snapchat, you just don't get technology. It's like, no, maybe I just think that it's fucking stupid. No, I maybe don't, I don't maybe. get it either. And and I say this uh, totally as somebody who is available uh, to be hired to work on Snapchat stories for your brand, for your company, uh, just throwing that out there. Snapchat is ridiculous to me. I don't understand the appeal of it at all. Uh, newsrooms have like two times as many people in some cases working on Snapchat stories that literally disappear in 24 hours as opposed to, you know, things that stay up and uh, redirect people to their website and continue to be their IP ad infinitum. I, I, I don't, I, why are your people, <laughs> I'm just old. I guess that's it. We're just old. We don't understand, but, but it is amazing that I don't, what could they do right now? That would be, uh, that would be panned. Could they put out anything that would be panned that people would be critical of, or would it just be, well, look, it's, it's snap baby. It's Snapchat. You got to you got to get on this future snap, train, baby. right? <laughs> it's a snap thing, babe. And that's the thing. I think it's like... I think that there is this worry that... It happened with Kickstarter, though. And it yeah. happened... Like, look at Pebble. Look at fucking Pebble. Look at how people jizzed up the wall about Pebble being the fucking future. And... <laughs> it's like... They were like, Pebble is the future. Why is it the future? Because it's a smartwatch that you can also use in the daytime. I'm like, okay, sounds like a just a watch to me. Ah, but it can show you notifications. Okay. I am like I got an Apple Watch and I fucking hate it. <laughs> I just think it's useless. I, I wasted my money yeah. there. 
I threw my money into the garbage. Because really, if you sat down and think about it, I actually do like watches. I prefer a normal watch. Mm -hmm. It tells the time and the notifications I got on it. At first, I was like, oh, cool. So I can see if I have a text without seeing my email, which causes causes me a shit ton of anxiety. Sure. But that was still useless. Snapchat, I don't see anything on there. And people like go on this garbage rant about how like teens like looking at things differently. Mm. I think there's no actual evidence to that point. But it's like teens don't. And my favorite, by the way, is this whole obsession with video. But like Snapchat, especially, there are no good snaps that I'm seeing. Like Vine is dead as well, and everyone's like, "Oh, Vine, R.I.P. Vine." Vine wasn't really. That ah, good. There were some really great vines, but like that's like saying there were some really good sketches on SNL. <laughs> like there, there's like within a large pile of shit, sure. there were some diamonds. Yeah, and it, Snapchat's it had a, even sort of worse. America's funniest home video quality about it. Yeah, that doesn't make I, it essential, just, but it but it, it it was fun. But but Snapchat. I guess this is why maybe this is why Vine uh, failed and why Snapchat won't. Is you know we talked about ecosystems. Uh, snaps are locked into the Snapchat ecosystem, um, and even then they go away sometimes. So it's uh, it's proprietary. That's I, for some reason I guess that makes it a successful technological uh, model. And I'm sure it's something people are going to try to emulate. And that's the thing, though. I wonder how much of this is driven by the media that ends up by proxy paying my bills. The like. Without this, like, I'm reading, you pick up a random thing. Snap Spectacles Review. Fun that's totally worth the trouble. This is by someone I actually really appreciate and I like a lot. But really his argument was, I can play with my dog while doing a video of it. And it's like, I, who cares? Do you, is this really part of your life? Do you need this? Do you want to record? It's this kind of self-fulfilling thing where it's like, People think their lives are that interesting. I don't think that that's how... I just don't... Just knowing people... And maybe I'm wrong. I'm often wrong. I'm wrong all the time. I love being wrong. It's great. Wow. Uh, but it's... It's something where I'm like... I don't know if that's how people do things. And going back to the video point, there's a, a great uh, moment in Sam Biddle history. Gorka... Former Gorka current intercept bloke. And where he posted a study where it was like, study finds most people want to read text, not look at video. And he's like, man, I hope nobody nobody invested all their money in this. And it's true. It's the same thing. It's like you go on ESPN and it's like everything is a video now. You 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 it's like text only article, it's a video, surprise. And it's you you're sat there in this kind of I don't want to watch it. I don't look at things that are video, and I know a lot of people who don't. I think Snapchat's the same thing. I don't think most people want to look at video. Every single Snapchat I've looked at that has sound, I've never heard the sound. Because I just don't want, like, the natural human condition to me, and I feel that for a lot of people, is not to listen to the fucking sound just while walking around my house. I don't want to. I get annoyed by it. Yeah, I, I think it's really people, strange. Uh, maybe, so, like you said, maybe some people do. I've never known anybody to do that, to enjoy watching video. For, for me, I... I'm not even a big reader, frankly, but I can read so much faster than I can yeah. listen to somebody act out the news. I don't like putting on my headphones to read the news. That's nonsense to me. I just, I want to read it and scroll it and then be able to get out of there when I'm done with it. I, I don't like loading up this garbage. I mean, forget, forget the point that, you know, bandwidth is now apparently finite, you know, uh, like that's probably a real concern for some people. Uh, and then you throw yeah. the eight ads on top of the video, and it's like, man, I've really invested like a non-zero amount of of electronic capital into just figuring out like who said what on the VMAs last night or some shit. I wish I could have just read a blurb. And oh, by the way, that's what Twitter is, and it's like a huge failure financially. So uh, obviously What's we're right? up our own asses. We don't know what we're talking about. But the, but that's my only perspective. Is is video is uh. It's a total non-starter for me. I don't get it. Well, I think that, that and that's the, that's the wonderful thing about it. We, t we started off talking about how, like, random doodads are pretty fucking useless. And these things on Indiegogo are useless. Snapchat. Kind of fucking useless. I mean, it's, it's fine. Lots of people use it. That I get. But then you get to the news section, 
and it is the it is the toilet of news. Mm. And I don't even mean tabloid. When they try and do hard hitting news, it is one of the. It's actually funny. It like makes things funny that shouldn't be. Because it's just so awkward. It's like oh, I have to scroll up, and then a video kind of plays. And if I haven't got the sound on, you may as well not bother. And then there's like some like text like flies in the right. And they're like, and I can imagine a bunch of smug fucks sitting around being like, yep, teens are going to love that. And they probably, I would love to actually, when I go home at Christmas, I'm going to talk to my teenage niece and nephew and just be like, do you actually look at anything Snapchat? Like, do you, do you, because my sister has not said to me, and I know my, my niece uses Snapchat fairly regularly. And I said, I'll cut the dick off any guy who sends her one <laughs> over it. I mean it. I'll come for him. Um, it's, but it's, it's one of those things where I have not had the request to like line up and get one, which makes me assume that they're not actually going to have any effect on anyone other than the media. I guarantee this was done specifically as a marketing stunt and it's worked wonders. They have got tons of press for a totally useless thing. And, and that there have been so many fawning pieces saying it's going to change fashion Remember those for Google Glass? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking awful. And most tech is kind of useless. I mean, even the new Uber app. Barely mentioned. It, it barely makes sense. The the it tracking you're talking sense. about, the new the added tracking feature? Well, no, not even that. I mean, you can't see... Like, when you load up Uber now, you can't actually look at it and just be like, okay... I am here. It will automatically sense your location. Not until you actually start a journey. You can go where to, and then you have to enter in all your shit. That seems like a small thing, but most people want to say, I am here before they go somewhere else. Most cab companies fuck that up anyway. It's just little things like that where these technologist ass wipes are not thinking like human beings. Well, It's, I, it, it's what worries me. It is. It's concerning because they're the ones that are uh, in charge. Basically, uh, there's there's two spheres of influence. It's the political sphere of influence, which is f- fucked, and it's the, the technological sphere of influence, which is, I guess, fucked. Like in the other direction, uh, yeah. it's not an autocracy, but it's just like a, a bunch of people who don't understand what they're doing. I think, uh, and they're the ones that dictate what the rest of us do. So we're just all walking around with our thumbs up our asses. Um, but have you? Do you have any do you have any of these things that like maybe you would otherwise dismiss as uh useless or or uh ostentatious even or silly uh or that came from Kickstarter even like is there a success story in the Zitron house like do you have one thing that you say well that sort of delivered on the promise of the premise like I did it worked out fine is there anything like that for you I'm genuinely trying to think like I, I do, of the things I've had several that just never made it. Actually, yeah, there is one. There is one, but it's a client, so I feel like a twat talking about it. So I won't name them. Ah. What it is is it's a beer thing. You you have a tube that comes from it. It closes. It's it t- does a vacuum, and it basically turns a can of beer into a draft. Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It works because they didn't really try and do too much with it. And I back the next thing as well, and they're not a client anymore. <laughs> and it just makes it easier to do because they realized that it was just the initial delivery mechanism fucking sucked, but still worked. But it's that but then I can think of like 30 others. I had one where I backed a not even a like this is why Kickstarter's trash, by the way. I backed a band to cover a song. I think it was like a Soundgarden song. And they're like, yeah, turns out we can't cover songs, we're just not good at it. I'm like, you did you try beforehand? <laughs> Or the one where it was meant to be like a little clip on camera and they claim they shipped it. I, mean, I, I was like, where's the tracking number? It never appeared. It's a great Never scam. responded. $200, gone. Yikes. They made the money. Um, the only ones that have ever come through are like battery packs. Those ones because they are generally working off the same structure and like, all right, I had a good idea. I'm going to do this. And that those ones work. My favorite though is... There are, I bought, I backed this, like, I don't know what it was. It was like this $300, uh, 
electronic bike. And then they emailed me when they finished. They're like, yeah, shipping's like 200 bucks. Ah. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Like, you never said this. Yeah, I mean, and I'm I just sympathetic, went, but... And, uh... and, just, and, then, and then I... And there are met so many more now. There's one on there that's raised like $4 million that's a $700... $700 electronic bike. So clearly the one I was talking to was a scam. Um, but it, it's... Like, you don't really need an electronic bike. You've got, if you can ride a bike, because you still need to balance it, just get a bike, just get a scooter, just fucking get a car. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Do you need an electronic bike? I mean, it makes sense. And this guy's in Copenhagen, so maybe it makes sense in Europe. But it's just $4 million. When does the bottom fall out of this shit? Like, why is there just, like, and, and on a completely different subject as well, I just click over to TechCrunch. GE puts Amazon Alexa inside a funky table lamp. Oh, I'm glad you, I, I just saw this too. I wanted to bring this up. Is that not perfect? Have you, have you seen the, have you had a chance to watch the pitch video? What, what's the pitch? It's, uh, it's a lamp. What's well, exactly it like it on. sounds. Uh, Alexa is inside the lamp. Um, you don't have to have... The, the the app you don't have to have the Alexa itself the dot the Echo whatever no hubs or anything like that so you talk to your lamp so on the one hand that if you if you agree with the concept of the Alexa or the Echo which like you I have one it sounds like you use yours a lot more than I use mine uh, but that's and it works it's, it does it mostly works the problem for me is that I have kids and so if I say Echo what's the weather then uh, she says the weather. And then, like, there's 30 minutes of my toddlers yelling, echo, what's the weather at it? So, for me, right now, it's not a good time for voice control uh, <laughs> for no. our household. But, so the the lamp itself, I guess the main problem I have with the lamp is that it looks uh, incredibly stupid. Uh, it looks a <laughs> lot like, for people who are familiar with the Dyson... Oh, 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 the air multiplier, I think well, is what it's yeah, called. The, the fan. It's a fucking fan. The the fan, the bladeless fan, where it's just a big circle that I guess there's like probably a fan in the base that blows it out the top, right? Like that's how it works. But yeah, this is what the lamp looks like. Uh, it's like it's a it's a circle uh, with empty negative space in the middle. Like you could pass your arm through it if you wanted. It looks and it looks like someone has balanced one of the discs from Tron on a small black base. That's yep. That's exactly it. And the interior is blue. So to me, that's probably the notification light, like you would see on the Echo. Uh, and the outside is like like a tube LED that puts off probably half the amount of light that like a makeup mirror would. So perfect. I don't I'm not sure what this is for because it's a pretty shitty lamp. It seems like And they haven't announced pricing <laughs> as well. That's the best thing. It's exciting. It's just like so it's like it but if you break this down into the simplest of English, which really easy as I'm quite stupid, is you break it down to you can now in the future use Alexa with a lamp. Yeah, it's a sp- which you can already do already with like real ease. But on top of that, it's like, why do you need this? Like, I'm I'm not even talking about like just the the which I I always hate the kind of like why do you need this? Why do you need this? That kind of argument is just there are so many useless fucking things everyone owns, and there's if you start doing everything based on some breakdown of everything you own. Yeah, just because it's not like, food doesn't mean you can't buy it. Yeah. I, I agree. There's no sense in setting but these in ridiculously case, high bars. <laughs> but I'd like the lamp to this... be a good lamp, at least. <laughs> you get one, 20 bucks. And if you really want to get, like, all... And the great part is this: there's no pricing here. There's no pricing and you can't pre-order this. So it falls into exactly the same fucking problem that's going to happen very very soon which is it happens every year with kickstarter so if you go on there and look for like an iphone case what always happens with these is you go on and by the time the case actually is made and shipped there's a new iphone it doesn't work with yep every every time this is going to happen with it like something will change with alexa because amazon frankly has done some pretty amazing stuff with echo i fucking love it it's like it's the only technology that has come out where i've been like 
this actually will change the world. Like this actually has an effect. I got an Echo Dot for my grandmother-in-law and she, Dot even, and she uses it. It has a tinny ass speaker. It was like 40 bucks and she uses it all the time. She sets timers and such. Oh. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. This lamp, I don't know what the, like, why, why a lamp? Why a lamp specific? A ten, an Alexa controlled Roomba makes more sense than this fucking lamp. Because at least that thing is mobile. At least it follows you around. Or at least follows some pathing. It moves. This is just a lamp. What do you want the lamp? What are you controlling with it? You said lamp off. Oh, no. So, it's, so this actually is... The, so it's not just like the Philips Hue, uh, like smooshed into a lamp base. Uh, the, at least according to this video, it's it's going to interact with the rest of your devices in the same way that that a full fledged Echo would. It just looks like a shitty frisbee lamp. So it's the it's basically the same thing, uh, except for there's like a halo of light surrounding it but it's but it's supposed to do everything else uh that you do now with your echo uh f- for some reason yeah it just doesn't make sense it, it it's what what it comes down to is it, it barely makes sense in the human home and i can understand why TechCrunch has to write about ge and alexa doing something like they're big enough companies that it's of no yeah the lack of criticism is a little bit cheap but it's there is this amazing thing where we have multiplied by some incredible amount, thanks to the not just the tech industry. Kickstarter and Indiegogo are the criminals. They're the ones enabling, like you said, these kind of late night people who used to <laughs> the late night people who are how can I put this nicely? They are the ones that are making shitty products that people can be conned into thinking actually exist. Mm-hmm. The whole too good to be true thing has been removed because all of these products look real and they're being promoted on a platform that has been romanticized. Right. So fuck fuckler and it's ilk, like the stupid social network. Remember Peach? Did you see Peach? Sure. By the way. What was sure. what was Peach? I still don't I still don't know, by the way. I don't know Maybe either, because we'll I felt like I got burned by the, the previous Twitter alternative, which was uh Ello, Ello, yeah, that's right. So I, I felt like, hey, what, why do I need Peach when I have Ello? <laughs> <laughs> why do I need Twitter when I have Ello? Yeah, it's just so good, and it's just like there, there are all these things that pop up, and you're like, uh, I don't know why. But then you've got Indiegogo and Kickstarter, which are mercilessly profiting off of the worthless shit and the gullibility of people. And I keep saying, I've been saying it for a while. Oh, there's going to be a point at which it dies. Oh, there's going to be a point at which it dies. And frankly, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, um, I'm not sure when this is going to happen. Like, when this dies, when this actually happens, the longer it goes on and the more successful it is now, the worse it's going to be. Because it's not like, like, people have already been scammed for millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. in aggregate. To the point that Kickstarter actually hired a journalist to investigate how one failed. They didn't give the money back to the people who lost it. Nah, just fucking paid some guy. Just what? Why be ethical? Because they and there there is going to be, in my opinion, my my guess is that eventually there is going to be a point where someone gets sued really badly. Like, and it gets like the SEC, I guess, would be the people in question. And they just go, okay, we're gonna look into this. And that's when so many companies collapse because it will go retroactively. It will fuck up everyone. That's, that's I want pretty it to optimistic. Happen. I, look- I mean, like you, said, like you said, it doesn't have to be about politics, but just because it is on the forefront of everybody's mind right now, uh, it seems like maybe one of the most tangible effects of the new administration will be uh, rolling back consumer protections, uh, putting people who are anti-consumer into positions of power, um, you know, the, the healthcare marketplace is one example, but you know, the banking industry is already getting excited about things being rolled back and all the other stuff. So if the consumer protection bureau and other pro consumer agencies are kneecapped, 
uh, I don't I don't know where this enforcement is coming from. Um, like you said, that at this point there's already a tremendous amount of money in it, and it seems like there's only going to continue to be a growth in uh, you stealing from people, and and we're definitely not going to get any smarter. Uh, so I don't I'm not sure I'm not quite as optimistic as you are that there's like a an end in sight. You want to know? Kind of you want to know why? You want to know why this is going to happen? What's that? All right. Let me tell you how Indiegogo and Kickstarter are going to die in the hands of Trump. And there's one major reason. All right. You heard it here first. Well, well, this is my, this is my tinfoil hat thing. <laughs> Where are most of these devices being built? Singapore. Mm. Okay. China. I can absolutely imagine, if not Trump himself, because I don't think, I think he's going to be so confused for most of the time that he's just going to go. But there will be someone. But if he does it, he's going to be like, well, these people, they're scamming people, I and mean, they're bringing money to China and to Singapore, and it's not coming to America, and that is bad, and Indiegogo and the kickstarting, they need to be stopped. Like, that's what's, that is how I could imagine it happening, because it's not so much... Because there is just no manufacturing base to build these things here so i could totally see this having a geopolitical effect where one of these things catches trump's eye or it catches someone's eye within his cabinet and then they turn around and say actually this is really bad because these people like gilbert they, they, gilbert by who is making literally this thing called signal sgnl signal is the smart strap that enables you to make calls by placing your fingertip to your ear <laughs> That's a real thing, folks. <laughs> it is 2,938% funded and 1.7 million has gone into it. I guarantee that is manufactured in China or Singapore. Now, I have nothing against them. But that is the kind of thing that absolutely, absolutely without exception is going to catch someone's eye in that administration. And that will lead to some sort of insane totally unfair thing where it's like Indiegogo and Kickstarter can't feature things built there, which is just totally wow. unrealistic if anything involves that's the only way that this will happen and I can see it, I can see it happening, because most of these things are built over there, I mean shit, even like, it's brilliant as well, like this is like, oh yeah, it's totally uh, it's Los Angeles, Gilbert Bai B-A-I is uh, it, all caps but it's also got Translation and campaigns in what appears to be Chinese, Japanese, uh, dirty knees. Korean, look at these, Thailand, <laughs> bees knees. <laughs> basically, basically every language used with that throughout Asia. So what I'm suggesting is this is the kind of thing that's going to get going to stop this. This is how it's it's not going to stop because of ethics. It's not going to stop because people are like. Nobody is going to be able to make a strap for your phone that goes in your fingertip that lets you make phone calls by sticking your fucking finger in your ear like person of interest. No, we're, no. we're far too credulous uh, and flush yeah. with disposable income, apparently, for for those things to work. Yeah. But what's what's going to happen is that, like, someone's going to notice that it's all being built and all this money is going to... So the, of $1 million, I'm guessing... 40 to 50 percent of that is going to people who aren't americans mm -hmm. in another country which is and that's how i i don't think i'm wrong i i think that that's i think that that may actually be like how this happens boy i don't know i mean it's i mean it's not just the the shitty scam prod products that are on these uh, crowdfunding websites it's everything we're using to record the podcast right now um yeah it's absolutely uh, it's, and He's already made the stuff in our about house. Apple. Well, he's already said to Apple, like, bring your stuff all to America, which Apple will definitely never do. Right. But if he's doing that, it's... I have clicked on, throughout recording this, about 16 different ones of these, and at least five of them have had over a million dollars, including, by the way, polygons, the flat, four-in-one measuring spoon. Finally. <laughs> fin finally. <laughs> Fourteen dollars, one set of polygons. I'm running out of space in my kitchen uh, because of all the <laughs> measuring spoons in here. They're just—they're so huge. There's so many of them. They damn it! So much space. And there are so many different sizes. 
It's the uh, teaspoon, the tablespoon, the <laughs> big tablespoon. The, the, the black and spoon. white video of me fumbling through my drawers with <laughs> 5,000 <000 Yeah>. <laughs> measuring Do you spoons. have this problem? <laughs> Do you have this problem? My biggest problem with measuring spoons is that I somehow lose them, mm -hmm. even though there is one place I use them and one drawer I put them in. And there's a really easy solution. They cost like $3. You can buy them on Amazon. Yeah, but with like, with that's... this new four-in-one measuring spoon, you can uh, lose your measuring spoons at up to 400% of your previous losing your measuring spoons rate. So really, it's... Yeah. How can you afford not I to? I can't wait to lose these i can't wait to lose these fucking spoons as well. but that's the thing though that's the only way this is going to stop it's going to be that um it's going to be that insane thing where someone is going to like there's going to be another like well this 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 finger and ear one or whatever or someone in trump's insane cabinet of racists and large white men bumbling around trying to find the the string cheese he now has in every room. And I like string cheese. They're going to be like, wait a minute, two million dollars, that's a pretty big minus. Let me go check out the... What? That isn't being built in America because there isn't any manufacturing in America anymore. What have... sounds like you're saying is, is Trump is going to destroy free trade, which, if that's... Which is, that'll never happen. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, he, I, I feel like that's going to be... The only way that this stops, it could happen under a Democratic president, which we will have never again, because I assume he's just going to ban anyone else being president. And that's what that's what they said like about a, Obama, and he's packing up his boxes right now. He's taking and his, moving to California. He's taking his cigarettes. <laughs> he's he's to, taking his basketball court, and he's he's packing it up, and he's going to go start. He's taking he's Digi taking Obama. his book on. How MK Ultra works. Yep, it's all in the same he's box. He's he's, <laughs> he's just one box. Didn't have any clothes. No, nope, nope. well, he had the one suit. Yeah, but that stays. That's the president's yeah. suit. It stays there, and then he's getting he has, to, he has to walk out butt naked. Yeah, that's that's. It's, Sorry, all all my clothes are in there. It's the republic. I, that's what happens. They are now Mr. Trump's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. I wish. I wish it was that fun. That would add some I wish, I wish some uh, <laughs> some decorum to this process. I really think that there should be a passing of the suit and a, an untying of the tie. <laughs> and, and, but it's always someone who's a different size, so it never quite works. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It's the but same they, suit that uh, Grover Cleveland wore when he got stuck in the bathtub. <laughs> oh, oh, imagine the stains. <laughs> Oh boy, but it's but but to wrap it up, it's just there are so many problems with technology right now, and the depressing part about it is that just I think it's not so much that people have run out of ideas, is that people feel like they have to come up with one. Like I think that people have just got to a point where it's part greed, partly greed, and partly. <laughs> It's partly greed and partly this other feeling of like, you know, it's kind of like starting a blog mm -hmm. or a podcast even. Oh, Christ. <coughs> but it's, 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 <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, it's this feeling that you're kind of being left out of the next big movement and you have to, and there's definitely a lot of greed to it, but I feel that people are moving towards technologies or inventing shit specifically so they can feel involved so that they can feel like they are having a measurable effect on society that they are measurably able to say okay i'm making i'm doing an event i'm doing a kickstarter I'm doing a kickstarter patreon it's the same thing but far less terrible but it really is this indiegogo kicks it started with startups because it was easy enough to start a startup you can Okay, you can code. Fine, great, cool. Um, but it now it's like so easy to put one of these shitty campaigns up, and the Chinese, Singaporean, different the different places you can get things manufactured. They or better are, yet, like, people are just doing. No, Go I was ahead. just to say, better yet, you don't even have to manufacture it; you just get acquired. 
Like, let somebody else deal with well, it. Well, not not just that. Well, they never do that now because they all, they, it's the uh, high roller mentality where they're like, oh, but if I win again, <laughs> which is what happened to Pebble, which is exactly what happened to them. But I think it's this thing where the reason we're seeing so much useless shit is desperation about being left behind. You can say about podcasts, sure, but they're pretty easy to put together. I mean, I'm a dipshit and I make one. <laughs> but the idea of like GE doing a smart lamp that has voice in it, it's desperation. They just think that they have to fucking do something. They think they have to. And that's why these startups, that's why you don't see many startups, ironically, like Theranos, that are trying to change the world because it's actually very difficult to do that. However, it's also, the, it means that people are just making useless shit. They're making shit that sounds cool and appealing to people who say, oh yeah, I could use that shit. That sounds cool. People wasting their money and making it on the cheap in in Asia, which is fine. I don't mind about Asia Asia's part in that. They're, at least they're making money off of it. It's just worrying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for every one, you know, uh, clean water producing device or yeah sure even blood testing or compostable toilet or whatever the hell uh how many how many different vr headsets are we gonna get a hundred a thousand like how many of those do we need before it's like all right you know we i think we get the general concept but like you said nobody can be left behind and and vr is another one everybody has to have not only so they've got to have the consumer grade vr headset right uh, they got to have yeah. the phone that goes into the VR yes. headset. They got to have the gamer rig. Then, of course, eventually we're going to come down to, you know, branded computers that are designed to uh, work uh, at optimum levels with the same branded headset. You've got the controllers. Already happening. Yeah, you've yeah you've got the peripherals, and then of course you've got the games, right? So, you know. It's, it's, that's going to vertically integrate it sometime as well. And and by the end of it, it's you've got a $3,000 uh, paperweight, but it's not even that heavy because it's like made out of plastic. So it's not even a good paperweight. But but VR is the next one. It, everybody's got to have everybody's got to have their crack at the uh, at the plate. Well, good. A good way to talk about the waste of this all as well has to be. Have you heard about VR backpacks yet? Because this is the gr- the greatest place to end this on. Oh, God. As far as just totally useless, p- obsolescent within two fucking seconds shit. <laughs> what is it? Is it a, a computer that goes back there? Is that the idea? Yep. It is a it is a <laughs> literal computer that you wear like a backpack with like a 90-minute pa- battery. Mm-hmm. Like a, literally a fucking backpack. And what's great is I read an article about one. There's like three companies making them. And what the well-known thing about computers is that they do get slower over time and also technology outpaces them. Sure. So these things are never upgradable. They're backpacks as well. As I said, they are literal fucking backpacks. So basically they are built for the technology of today, released late after said technology comes out. And they're like $1,500 and they are within six months, going to be junk. That is the world we live in. It's like this desperation. And there's someone, there's someone out there who is like, okay, I don't know who it is. I want to find the person who keeps doing this. I want to find the person out there in these companies who is like, you know what we need? We need, who is it? MSI, for example, not mind the self-indulgence, the computer company. Who said, you need a $2,000 MSI VR backpack. Who said that? Whose idea was this? Who thought this was a good idea? One that would last? Is it like, do they think like, like, someone should be fired for coming up with the idea? Kind of like, like a lesser version of saying a slur at work and getting fired. Like just you said, let's make a VR backpack, you piece of shit. Get out. Pack your fucking bags. (laughs) In your VR backpack, you twat. Like, it's like, that's the thing. This is the world. It's not just these Indiegogo shitbags making totally useless things. It's these people at very large companies who then wonder, huh, where did it all go wrong? 
It's here. This is where it's going wrong. In the desperation of seeing what is popular or what is not popular, people are just doing fucking shit. They're just shitting their... They, they are completely shitting it. And it's just utterly ridiculous. Yeah, New, New Horizons, man. The, the MSI is the company that, that makes the you know 19-inch laptop that has a 30-minute battery life and... Uh, weighs it weighs 10 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, so it's it's definitely not a new mo for them, but uh, but it is getting more craven and expensive uh, and ostentatious uh, as we go along. So it's it's great. The fall of Rome uh, was fun, I think, probably. So I'm I'm looking forward. What happens? <laughs> what happens to me when this goes wrong, though? <laughs> like, I, I'm I'm like like there is just this genuine like being part of this industry. Maybe it's a bit reptilian of me to say this, but it's like there is something in the back of my head. Like I don't deal with the VR backpacks, but I do deal with startups and shit. And I'm always a bit as every I wake up in the morning, I I, I stare at the ceiling and dread just existing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, occasionally it does occur to me. It's just okay. So I'm not working with the VR backpacks, but I do sit there and think. What's going to happen when all of these companies... Because I don't really work with a large amount of stupid companies. But when the stupid companies start dying, the funding will dry up for everyone. Like one called BP, which was actually a decent idea, but they were, stri- they, they were shit when I used them, just died. Um, Where they would like sell you a used car and drive it to you and shit. All of this stuff which involves human capital... But as these companies die and investors lose 150 million in funding, they're going to stop funding all companies. It's all just going to die. So there is that horrible like anxiety. I mean, it's just like, how much longer do I have? Like, is there going to be a day I wake up and there is no industry? Well, there'll always be a tech industry. There'll always be a need for what I do, I guess. But is it going? To, it, is there going to be a compression everywhere in media, in tech, and everything? How bad is it going to get when kind of everyone looks at the emperor and realizes his dick's out? (laughs) Guy's got a nice dick. (laughs) And that's a great place to end our 14th episode and our first one with Jesse. Thank you for coming on, Jesse. And we're looking forward to having you regularly as in every episode. Thanks, man. It was a blast. I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back. Yeah, next time Felix will be back to tell us exactly how everything we've talked about relates to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> but you've been listening to The Scumbag. I'm Ed Zitrom. Uh, I'm Jesse Ferrar. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>